What up, brothers and sisters, and welcome to MTG Malone with me, Max Malone. Thank you all so very freaking much for tuning in. It is a beautiful day. It's like 30 degrees outside Celsius, so I don't know what's that in American Fahrenheit, but who, who even cares? I'm European, so sue me, sue me. So, thank you all so very freaking much. I really appreciate you taking a busy time out of your busy day to watch me play some magic. And uh, today we have a very, very fun deck. Before we get into that, though, if you didn't do so already, we're almost there, we're very close to the three freaking thousand, even closer to the three thousand than to the two thousand five hundred, it is insanity. And I think that until the end of the month we can absolutely freaking lootly do this. Yes, I know the month is only two days old, so we still have a lot of time until then, but it's better to be chilling with your goals than to force them out super hard. And uh, also thank you all so very much for everyone that joined the Patreon, we will talk about it as always at the end of the video. So enough yammering, let's get into the agonizing Ugin. Hammering! Oh, I realized everyone is playing aggro right now. And what is the best against aggro? Well, a lot of life gain, a lot of removal and four freaking Ugins. So I am returning to one of my favorite archetypes, the mono black Ugin deck. So. Let's get over the black cards real quick. We have three Shadows Verdict because uh, aggressive decks. We have three Extinction Events because, uh, yeah, all the other stuff that isn't three or less, very freaking good. We have four Pay for Masteries to get rid of whatever we want, whenever we want, two mana, four mana, whatever you want to do. There you go, Pay for Mastery is in here to rock the house. Then we have the Cram Session to get access to our Learn Board, which is over here. I will get over that real quick. Then we have two Agonizing Remorse in here, just in case we encounter a uh, Yorian deck. With the Agonizing Remorse, we can just get rid of their Emergent Ultimatum or whatever we don't like in their hand. Just get it out of here. Also, we can take care of something out of the graveyard if we really need to. But uh, we don't really have to do that because we also have three Arabosses Intervention. And I put this in here because there is a lot of indestructible creatures running around, running rampant. I think it is just better as the flunk because uh, even though we like the flunk, the Arabos intervention just gives you life and uh, yeah, to get rid of something for two mana that only has one attack or one toughness is okay. If you have more mana, thanks or Forsaken Monument, you can do it for a lot more. So it is very freaking a-okay Arabos intervention, one of the best removals right now. Thanks to all these indestructible creatures, together with the Bay for Mastery, you get rid of freaking everything. So, that is our uh, our black part of the deck. And uh, yeah, then we have, of course, the colorless part, with the Forsaken Monument. Uh, all of your colorless creatures get plus two plus two, so your Solemn Simulacrum will be a 4-4, four, four. your Faceless Haven will be a 6-5, your uh, Crawling Barons will be a 4-4 four, four. the first time to get in here. It is so good. Then whenever you tap a permanent for colorless, you add an additional colorless, so all of these lands up until here produce two mana, which is so good, because that means that you can have a turn six Ugin. So freaking bueno. Then uh, whenever you cast a colorless spell, you gain two life. And we have a lot of colorless spells with the Maze Mind Tom, which will help us find whatever we need starting turn two. So if you have it in your starting hand, Think about keeping it, even if you only have two lands with the Maze Mind Top, you can, can, can scry two times before your next draw, so it can be very valuable, just think about it. Then we have, as I said, the Solemn Simulacrum, uh, Simulacrum, 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 and it helps you uh, draw five lands, if they kill it, you draw a card, very freaking bueno, and uh, yeah, as I said, with the Forsaken Monument, if you have it out, you gain even two life when you play it, same with the Maze Mind Tome, you gain two life, then the Cosmos Elixir. At the end of your turn, you gain 2 life, unless you have more than 20 life, then you draw a card. So if you have 2 or 3 Cosmos Elixirs out, you will draw a lot of cards, which is very, very sassy. And uh, yeah, also if Forsaken Monument is out and you play your Cosmos Elixir, you gain 4 life that turn. 2 for the Forsaken Monument, 2 for the Cosmos Elixir, it is just so freaking good. And then we have the finish them all, end of existence, Ugin. The Spirit Dragon. You deal 3 damage to any target. You exile everything with mana value X or less. And uh, then if you ever get in a luxurious situation that you can minus 10 in, you will get 7 life, draw 7 cards and put 7 permanents onto the battlefield. Whatever they are. Lands, creatures, uh, artifacts, whatever it is. You can just 
put it down. So, in Wishboard, we have the two environmental sciences just to make sure that we can get the lands when we need them. So, if we have a turn two cram session and don't have any lands, we can use the environmental sciences turn three to get our third land. It is pretty freaking good. But if you only have two lands and you don't have a Maze Mind Tome, maybe don't keep that hand, even though, uh, even if you have the cram session, it could be just a little too dangerous as we are. Artifact decks are expensive. Then we have the introduction to Prophecy, to Scry 2, and a Drug Heart. It is very freaking good. And if you have your uh, Forsaken Monument out, all of these cards will even give you life. So that is very good. Then we have one introduction to Annihilation. One is enough, as we have a lot of removal in the deck already. And then we have two Basket Exhibitions to create us some blockers. Those are colored blockers and attackers, so they won't be triggered by the Forsaken Monument. But the card itself gives you two life. And if you have uh, your Forsaken Monument out, you can do this for uh, three and a half lands. So, pretty freaking good. That means if you have three colorless lands and a black source, you only pay four instead of seven. Very freaking nice. So, then the rest of the deck, of course, is lands. We have the Faceless Havens, as I just said. So we can use our Snow-Covered Swamps to uh, make those four threes. Then we have the Crawling Barons, which will become 2-2s two and then 4-4s. Four if you have your Forsaken Monument out, you can push them at the end of your turn, uh, at the end of your opponent's turn, if you have nothing better to do. And then just swing in for a lot of damage. It is very freaking bueno. We have two Castle Locked Wains, just to make sure that we can draw a lot of cards if we need to. With 10 beautiful snow-covered swamps. And we have four Radiant Fountains, just because they fit the life gain theme and they will be tapped for two with the Forsaken Monument, which is just so freaking bueno. And yes, we have the uh, we have the uh, Platinum Angel Sleeves here, because they just fit so well. So, I really freaking love this deck, and I think at the beginning of the season, either you play Super Aggro or you counter the Super Aggro, and here it is, the Super Aggro counter. It is very fun. If you're going up against Monoret deck that starts first, maybe you will have a bad day, but uh, against everything else, all this Mono White that is running around right now, they're just one or two turns too slow. So you will get the Shadow's Verdict out, you will get your Rugen out when you need it, and uh, yeah, just uh, wipe him away. Alrighty, so this is the Agonizing Ugin, I'm Matches Malone, and I will see you in those agonizing games. Alrighty, so my hair is all messed up, a perfect... Perfect time for a video. Alright, opponent's going first, but we have a very nice hand here. We have the Faceless Haven, we have the Radiant Fountain, the Castle Locked Wayne. what else do we want? Nothing, I tell you. And the Erebus Intervention, of course, and the Maze Mind Tome to find whatever we need. And we're up against the CGB Mono White deck in the first game. Mm. Let's get some life. Let's just get some tasty freaking life. Alright, it looks like the camera is a little bit messy. But we will find out very soon. Alrighty. So. Maybe that wasn't the best decision here, my friend. Maybe it wasn't. But uh, we will find out. I will keep the Erebus intervention for the Luminarch Aspirant. We'll see where he puts it. Alright. Yeah. We're still okay-ish. We are still okay-ish. So. If he now uh, wants to sacrifice his outside of life's bounty to keep his Luminarch Aspirant, I'm totally freaking fine with that. Totally fine with that. He doesn't. Okay. So, getting in for a 3 life swing, but uh, sooner or later we will turn this around. All we need is uh, one board wipe. One single board wipe, and then we're super good. And that is what we're digging for immediately. Like yesterday. All my troubles seem so far away. There you went! There you freaking went. Alright, putting down the Faceless Haven. So next turn we have Solemn Simulacrum into uh, another freaking land and that will be okay. That will be super okay. Doesn't look like he has anything. The Charming Prince. That is still not enough, my friend. Bika Boys. Pikachu. That is still not enough. Freaking not enough. Scrying 2. Alright. 2 on bottom. Must feel bad. Must feel bad. Yeah. Alright, we're putting down the snow-covered land, just in case we want to, uh, you know, use our Faceless Haven sooner or later. Which I don't think we will. I just don't think we will. So, we're, of course, taking the snow-covered land. And now he's crying. 
And sooner or later we will also get a lot of life back. So that is very sweet. Do we want that? Do we want that? I think... I think we don't need it here. I just don't think we need it. Also putting the stop on the upkeep. Never forget that part. So you can uh, just, uh, you know, scry once more with the Maze Mind Tomb. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Solemn Simulacrum is out of here. But uh, yeah. The Shadow's Verdict is in here. So everything is still freaking bueno. And we're getting a lot of life back very soon. Thanks to uh, our Maze Mind Tome and the Cosmos Alex here. Alright. Do I want to land? I actually do want to land. I actually do want to land just in case we draw our Ugin sooner or uh, later. Alright. There you go. Goodbye everything on the field. No matter what you do here, you're Gonzo. Your graveyard is Gonzo. You have nothing left and I have a 4-4 four -four now. That's even better than a 2-2 that draws your card in my opinion. But that's just like my opinion, dude. Oh, that is kind of bad. That is kind of bad. So, we really need to put down the stop. Okay, perfect. Freaking perfect. So, we really need an answer here for the Speaker of the Heavens. Otherwise, it's getting out of control a real freaking quick. The Forsaken Monument. I mean, that gives us life. That gives us freaking life. So, yeah, why the heck not? But it must be done differently. Absolutely. freaking lootly One, two, three, four, and five. Now we put down the Forsaken Monument. Now are we putting down the Cosmos Elixir? I think we are. I think we are. Just giving us four life here is very good. Very freaking good. And right now he can't do too much but make himself an angel. And we will be on 20 life next turn once more, so everything is still kind of okay. And we can start drawing with the Castle Locked Wayne. So, sooner or later we will find an answer for these stupid angels. The Mothra. That is very good, not gonna lie. Very freaking good and not gonna lie. So he will be, uh, yeah... Getting something, but he can't make an angel this turn, which is pretty a okay to me. It is pretty a okay uh, to me. So, putting down the Solum Simulacrum, getting ourselves to life. Putting down the Cosmos Elixir, getting ourselves to life. Also, we're drawing a land here, which is good. Getting all these lands out of the deck is very freaking sweet. And now we're getting ourselves two more life, then we'll get two more life from one Cosmos Elixir, and then we will draw a card, which is just very nice. Also, we can afford to attack in here. What's he gonna do? What you gonna do? Nothing, I tell you. Nothing. So, drawing one card here, and getting life. Very freaking sweet. Now we have the Cram Session. The Cram de la Session, that is very sweet, because that means that we will be able to get something... That will help us out here, honestly. Yes, 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 yes. But what will it be? Well, we'll find out. But I think uh, it will be glorious. It will be glorious. Yes, yes. We're still getting a lot of life back every single turn. The Skyclave Apparition. Getting rid of, uh, what, one of the Cosmos Elixirs? You are a monster. The Solemn Simulacrum once more. You monster. You freaking monster. Alrighty. So. We still have ways to go, so nothing to worry here. We're still getting the life. I think I want the uh, introduction to fire uh, to prophecy here. How much mana do I have? I have enough mana. I do have enough mana. So we're adding one here, one here. Uh, getting some life back with the Forsaken Monument. And hopefully finding our Ugin here would be very freaking sassy. The Shadow's Verdict is also pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. We can't play it yet, but that is no problemo. Yet. So. Are we taking one more hit here? I think we're taking one more hit. I mean, we're drawing two cards. 
And uh, if we Shadow's Verdict and then get rid of the Mothra, that is very sweet. Alrighty. Alrighty. So we are taking one more hit. We can afford it. <clears throat> Pass into attacks. Attacking in with everything. Yes, yes. Yes, do that. So this is 4, 8, 10. Yeah, we can take 10. We can. I don't want to have them anything for my, uh, with the Skycliff Apparition. And we're getting four life back every single a turn. So freaking tasty. So, the Shadow's Verdict is here. We also have the Arabos's Intervention to get ourselves uh, some more life back. We are attacking in first, of course. For this tasty damage. And then we still have enough for the Arabos's Intervention on the Mothra, which is pretty sweet, not gonna lie. Say goodbye to your board, my friend. Say uh, goodbye to your board, my friend. Yes, goodbye. <laughs> Hello and goodbye. So, the camera is a little bit messy. I will fix it later. That, that doesn't help you at all, my friend. That just makes everything a little bit worse for you. Trust me, just a little bit worse for you. Because you will now have to realize that I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mana. So for 5 I can still do that. Get myself a lot of life back. And the Mothra still dies. Yes. <laughs> and I get a... 2 life? 4 life? Yeah, I get 4 life. And we're back at 22. Here's nothing. I have everything. Feels pretty sweet. Yes, it does. Oh, yes, it does. And now even the extinction event. And, uh, yeah. Well, let me do it differently. Let me do it differently. One, two, three, four. So we're getting the Solemn Simulacrum down. Number three. Because we have that kind of power. Yes, we do. And, uh, then we're just attacking in with everything. Take action. Yes, I take action. So now almost all of our lands are gonzo, which is pretty good. We are attacking in with a 6-5 here and a 4-4, four, four. so uh, who's the aggressive deck now, my friend? Who is the aggressive deck? Look at me. I am the aggressive deck now. And we can even uh, draw ourselves some cards with the Castle Locked Wayne if we really need to. We now have another Faceless Save and a Crawling Barons. Mm, 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 it's over, my friend. You don't even know it, but it is freaking over. You are exactly the kind of deck that I was preying upon. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Alrighty. Looking pretty good. All we need now is Nugent to finish them off. And then we're super, uh, super good. Then we're just super good. Better than super good. Alright. Drawing ourselves. Why do you want to use that one? Why, my friend? Why do you want to use the Faceless Haven without... Uh, yeah, the thingy. Without the... Uh, I forgot the word. The summon in sickness. Why do you want to use that one? Nobody knows. No a body African knows. Alright, so using a... Uh... Okay. He really doesn't care about his life total. Really does not care. We're drawing two more cards. So the possibility that we find something good here are pretty high. Didn't find a single Ugin in our half of our deck, even though we have... How many Ugins do we have? Four? Yeah, four. Four Afrikaner Ugins. Alrighty. Thinks he can get in there. That's so cute. That is so cute. Aww. Aww. But your Faceless Haven is so much smaller than mine. Mmm. Mmm. Mona White, get out of here. Get the freak out of here. Mm. All right, I restarted my cam just in case, but I looked at the material and it didn't look too bad. So I don't think that the problem was uh, being recorded. I think it was just my second screen. We are going first. We have the Ugin this time. Can we go with two lands? If we aren't up against a uh, creature based deck, we are pretty screwed here, not gonna lie. But can we pass up on three board wipes? Can we? Yeah, I think we can. This looks way freaking better. Way freaking better. And I think we are getting rid of the... Uh, hmm. I 
think we're getting rid of the cram session, to be honest. Sooner or later we will find a land. I hope so, at least. I mean, we have three turns to find a land. Three freaking turns to find a land. And we're up against Mono Red. That is freaking perfection. Because we want to go up against Mono Red. And there it is. There is our land. Everything we wish for. Everything we wish for. Okay. Pretty good. Not gonna lie. So, this is five. Okay. Five cards in hand. And we found yet another land. Okay, game. That is honestly not that bad. Because that means that we can play the Forsaken Monument. Which I like a lot. Which I like a, a lot. So. Are we baiting him to play even more? We will find out very soon. Yes, yes. Another Fervent Champion. I think that is enough stuff on the board to uh, wipe the board here. And uh, yeah. I think it was a good decision to mulligan here. Because we need a lot of lands. So yeah. I think it was a good decision. I think it just was. Also, he mulliganed, uh, he stole us the first thing that wasn't a land on top. Just, uh, just normal. Also, what is sticking out there? Something, oh, it's the cram session, okay. So, the question here now is... Do I get rid of the small stuff? I mean, this will be four, this will be five, so yeah, honestly, not that tough of a decision. Even, get the frick out of here. Get the frick out of here. So, we still have the Bay for Mastery, which is honestly very good. We still have the Cosmos Lex here, which is, oh my lord, of course. Oh, freaking course. Getting in for eight now. Yep, we're just, we just died. We just died. And we drew another freaking land. Are you serious? Are you freaking serious? So, yeah. We're super dead. We are a super dead. I mean, this is exactly so. This is exact lethal. There was just too much power on the board to uh, do anything. We didn't find our Erebus's intervention, which would have been very, very good here. And he found, like, a very good curve. A very freaking good curve. Not gonna lie, we were just a little bit too slow. And now he... yeah, yeah. Just to put insult to injury. Just to put the insult onto the injury. The one mono red deck that we always lose against, here it was. Here it freaking was. Challenge completed. If they would have had an annex instead of the um, instead of the dwarf, I think we would have had a chance here. But hey, we didn't. Opponents going first. We don't have any black. I don't really like this hand. I like this hand way freaking better. So I think it is the agonizing remorse. It doesn't look like we're up against the Yorian deck. So uh, yeah. Get rid of that. And we're up against... Oh, what? What? I have no clue what this is. But, uh, yeah. Good thing we have the Arabos intervention here. Nothing to fear. Nothing to worry. Everything is still bueno. What? This is so crazy. Alright, so the extinction event here is looking pretty tasty. Just looking pretty tasty. Worst case, we still have the Bayfo, we still have the Arabos intervention, so hey, hey, everything is good. If they're playing now in a uh, three mana creature, we're, uh, we can just take care of that with the Bayfo Mastery. Yes, that will draw him a card, but who even cares about that card? Alright, going all in with the life gain. All in with the life gain. Do we care? We honestly don't. We are still almost just as high with the life gain, so everything is still a-okay. We still have to pay for mastery, so if they play something big, we still have an answer. We do still have an answer. The Mall of the Skyclaves. That is actually still fine with me. Actually still fine with me. Yes, we're taking four here, but we can just wipe the board afterwards. Everything is freaking fine, so what you gonna do? Nothing, I tell you. Nothing. And now, worst case, if we don't draw a card next turn, we can just uh, cram session into a uh, environmental sciences. So that is still a okay. That is still absolutely a okay. So, another beloved princess. All right, and revitalize. Yeah, going all in with the. I'm. Yeah. Why not? Why the heck not? 
All right, so we are getting some life here, getting the environmental sciences, because we are missing out on land drops, which absolutely cannot happen with this deck. Absolutely should not happen with this deck. And we're still on 23 life. Everything is good. Everything is freaking good. Another Maul of the Skyclaves. All right, give it to me, Kazim Kaza Midori. Casa Midori, la casa di Midori. House of Midori. All right, and the Speaker of the Heavens. That one I was kind of expecting sooner or freaking later. So, how can we do this? I think we're just doing it like this. I think we are just doing it like this. And sooner or later we will be able to uh, use the Erebus intervention here to get rid of the beloved princess. Another revitalize, alright. That means they need a land here to use, to use the other mall of... Are you serious? How many malls do they have? How many of those do they have? So we also absolutely need a land here. Otherwise we are a little bit screwed, not gonna lie. Not uh, gonna lie. Give me a land. That is also equally as good. Just equally as freaking good. Alright. So let us see what they're playing here. I mean, we still have the Erebus intervention. We have the Maze Mind Tome next turn to draw us a land. So everything is good. Everything is still okay. Yeah, we can't have that. We absolutely cannot have uh, that. So the Righteous Valkyrie will be very chunky here, which is a little bit bad. Just a little bit. Alright, and we aren't finding any freaking lands, which is also very bad. Alright, we found a land. That is good. That is very good. So they will equip one of the hammers here, but we only need two more lands to be super safe. Are we dead until then? Well, we can still get ourselves some life back, so everything is still okay-ish. Not perfect, but okay-ish. The Luris. The freaking Luris. Alright, but all of your creatures are freaking exiled, so yeah. What's up with that? Alright. Agonizing Remorse, not too useful here. We absolutely need a land. Or a Forsaken Monument, not even that bad. Not gonna lie, that is not even that bad. So. Does it change anything here? Two, three, four, five. It doesn't. It doesn't. Just doesn't change anything. So, this is nine can only play one. So, either we die now or we survive one more turn. If they have something real good here, we will just die. So this is 9, plus, three, uh, plus 2 makes 11. So we might still have a small freaking chance here. Just a small freaking chance. And we will see, because we can play the Ugin next turn. Oh boy, yeah, I think we can make a comeback here. Should have equipped the hammer, honestly. Should have just equipped it. Maybe they want to equip the hammer onto one of the griffins. Who knows? Casa Midori. Yeah, yeah, that is just not the smartest decision ever. So, what is the griffin areas two? This is three, this is three. So, I think we have a pretty good chance here. Maybe we even draw a... Uh, no, that, uh, that is not too useful. Thank you. Not too useful. Oh, yeah, it's a land. Perfection. Freaking perfection. So, we're playing the Ugin here, and they will scoop. Just as I said, we're playing the Ugin and they will scoop. Ah, oh, pre recorded. Pre recorded. Mmm, two to one. Oh, man, I'm still sad about that one mono red game where they had the top brand on curve. Top brand on curve is always freaking a bad. Alright, so we don't have any black for the cram session, so I honestly can't keep this. This is way better, and as before, we will just get rid of the Agonizing Remorse here, as we're not playing against an uh, Yorian deck. Oh, we don't have nothing to do here. Let's put down the Castle Lockwain, doesn't really matter at all. 
Okay, it's another Mono Red deck. Can we get our revenge? Can we get our revenge? Oh, it's not. It's not another Mono Red deck. Maybe we can get our revenge here then. Against a non-Mono Red deck, which is no revenge then. Okay. So, not drawing any lands here in the first few cards is very painful. But we're drawing a second Cosmos Alex here and a second Extinction Event. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, game. Makes total sense. The odds of that happening are so low. So low. And the odds of drawing a land are 40%. So, just so you know, crazy things will happen every single day with us here in the arena. Didn't find another land. Did not find another land. That is so bad. So freaking bad. Yes, it really is. It really is so freaking bad. Oh, lord. Oh, lordy. All right, they didn't find a fourth land as well. That is good. And we did. We did find a fourth land. So we're trying to put down the Cosmos Alex here. If they have a counter spell, I bet they want to play it here. Little do they know that we just have another one. Yes, 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 yes. So, will one counter spell be used for a Cosmos Alex here? Here, It is. It is being used. All right. Little do they know, we just have another one. Marn, play something. Play something. I really want you to play anything. They don't. Don't play anything. So, I think the Maze Mind Tome here is just also a little bit better. And if they counter it, well, what you gonna do about it? Nothing. Alright, didn't counter uh, the Maze Mind Tome. Interesting. We're drawing ourselves hopefully a land. Hopefully a freaking land. Are they returning the Maze Mind Tome to my hand here? A Bone Crusher Giant. Interesting. But we found our sacred land. Oh yes, that is exactly what I wanted here. Exactly what I freaking wanted. So if they're playing the Bone Crusher Giant here and don't find another land, we can uh, play our Cosmos Alex here, which is pretty good. So we're just crying away. Found the Shadow's Verdict. I think we're good with the Extinction Event. I think finding lands here is way more important. Alrighty. Cosmos Alex here is activated. Very sweet. Very sweet. We're back to 20 life. Mm, yes, yes. So, they really need a land here. A blue land, that is. And, uh, yeah. Gold Span Dragon. Okay. Okay. If they have another counter spell in hand, I would be very sad. But it's still not the end of the world yet. Not yet. So, can we find even more land here? I hope we do. I really hope we do. Well, the Painful Mastery is also pretty good. It's also very, very nice to have. Because in case they do have a counter spell here, we can still get rid of one of these suckers. Which would be very sweet. Oh, is that a counter spell? Did you find a second side coming and could have played it perfectly thanks to the gold span dragon? It really looks like they did. Really looks like it. Oh, okay. Okay, really looks like they didn't. Really looks like they didn't. Alright, it's, it's looking way better than I hoped it would be. So this could still be taken an extra turn. Which isn't even that bad, because we still have the arrow bosses if we need to, we still have the Ugin if we need to, so getting life back is even so much possible, more possible than before, whatever I was saying here. But they don't. Don't have it. Alright. So we're crying away. Perfection. Freaking perfection. And we aren't... Oh, a land is exactly what I want here. A land is honestly exactly what I freaking want here. So, passing the turn, getting ourselves some life, seems pretty sweet. No matter what they have, we have enough removal in our hands to be annoying. Yes, we do. The Brazen Borrower. Alright, are we making ourselves a lot of life here? I think we are making ourselves just enough life that we can still use the... Uh, Faithful mastery if we need to. 
Oh, don't tell me you have a counter spell now. They don't. They don't. All right. Perfection. Per freaking faction. This might then be a, uh, yeah, Orange Epiphany. Just as I freaking thought. All right. But if they have like a, uh, whatchamacallit, a Gold Span Dragon here once more, or just another Orange Epiphany. Okay. Doesn't look like they have a Gold Span Dragon. And the two birdies aren't even that bad. Also means that that wasn't a counter spell, which is pretty good. Pretty freaking good. Alright, the Cosmos Elixir will now draw us cards. Everything is still bueno. So, what, what's the worst that could happen, honestly? What is the worst that could happen? Them countering our Ugin here would be very annoying, but we're still trying. Because, uh, yeah. We have some more in our deck. Okay. Okay. So do we even do it like this? I don't think so. I think we're just shooting down one of the birdies here. And then we will draw ourselves a card with the Cosmos Alex here. And sooner or later we will have our Ugin. Don't you worry about that. We will have our Ugin ultimate maybe even. Sooner or freaking later. So they could have a Magma Opus here. Could have it. Uh, yeah, what does it even help him here? Not too much. We should. Well, it does help him a lot. It does honestly help him a lot because they will have 4 for the Ugin, make a 4 4, shoot you. Yeah, it looks like they do. Looks like they do have the Magma Opus. Oh boy. But uh, would it have changed anything? No, I would still be on 7 with the Ugin. Would have lost it anyways. And this way they have to put all the effort onto the Ugin. So hey! I think it was a good choice in my book. Yeah, just as I thought. Oh, what? What? Okay. Okay. Weird, but okay. Attacking my face just to make sure that we don't have the... Uh... What? Oh, will it take an extra turn here, though? We don't have the Cosmos Alex here. I think no. I think no. The flamethrower sonata. I have never seen that card. Never seen anybody use that card. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So they might still have a uh, counter spell here. But do I really care? Do I really care about that counter spell? I do not. I do not. We're still uh, we're still in a good situation here. Alrighty. Then we're doing nothing. Then we're just doing nothing. We still have the Baneful Mastery ready to rock and roll, which I am totally excited about using. Yeah, they're really trying to keep us from drawing cards. That is uh, that is their main goal right now. The freaking main goal right now. The gold span dragon. Alright, we are Bayful Mastering that. If they have a counter spell in hand here and they want to use it, what you gonna do about it? What you gonna do about it? Do they? Do they? They do not. They do not. That means that we can finally draw a card with our Cosmos Alex here. Isn't it swell? Isn't it freaking swell? Oh boy. What a, what a brutal game this is. Mono Black against uh, Is It is a brutal matchup. Not gonna lie. I fear the counter spell every single turn. They only had one until now. Or they're not willing to use them. Could also be. <clears throat> Oh, this is so mean, but I love it. I freaking love it. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Top deck Ugin, best Ugin. Top deck Ugin is the best Ugin. Oh, oh. Even if they have an extra turn here now, yep. Does really help them. So, two Aurons are Gonzo. Two Aurons are freaking Gonzo. So, I had an interesting discussion yesterday in the comment section about taking extra turns. And I think that the first extra turn card ever was printed in uh, the first set ever. For two mana, you could take an extra turn. 
Brutal. Brutal. That is just, uh, shouldn't be allowed in my book. But hey, it was. It was freaking allowed, and, but that card is like banned in every single format. Is it time skip? I forgot the name. I forgot the name, but a two mana, take an extra turn card is just insanity. Freaking insanity. So, the boon of the wish giver is in the graveyard now. And now they, I think they finally found a counter spell. But we will be super brutal with our uh, Faceless Havens here when we can use one of them. We found a Solum Simulacrum. That is nice. That is actually pretty nice. So we are shooting down some birdies here. Now we are attacking in with our Faceless Haven. We couldn't have used the other one anyway, so what gives? What even gives? Now we are putting down the Solum Simulacrum and we will still have enough mana for a uh, for a Baneful Mastery. So everything is still bueno and we're still on 22 life so they really need to attack the Ugin here. They really really need to attack the Ugin here. Otherwise uh, yeah. Oh my lord they really had three of them now. Three freaking Baneful freaking Masteries. Are you serious? Are you freaking serious here. Uh, Aron's Epiphanies. Three of them. Okay. In the first 50% of the deck. That is pretty insane. The odds of that happening aren't too freaking high. They will still have one. But hey. Taking so many extra turns. Didn't really put the favor in their, in their direction for now. For now. So they really kind of have to attack the Ugin here. And I really hope they don't have another gold span dragon in hand. Would be pretty annoying. Alright, attacking our face. So it looks like they have an answer for the Ugin here. Looks like they do. Dugan. Looks like they Dugan. But even the Boon of the Wishgiver deals only six. If they like use the Draconic Intervention or the Torrent Sculpture here. Or just the Brazen Borrower to return it to our hand. Alright, that means they found a counter spell, finally. They finally freaking found a counter spell. Maybe we should have just put down the Brazen Borrower, attacking for six, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe a not. Alright, still trying to go strong with these uh, chipping me down for the Cosmos Elixir. I'm kinda fine with that. Kinda. It's not like perfect, but I'm kinda fine with that. So if they have a counter spell here now, what would that mean for us? We're still getting two life back every single turn. We still have our Faceless Haven and our Crawling Barons if we really need to. They're not doing anything. Uh, that means they 1 million percent have a counter spell in hand. So let's put down the Faceless Haven beat down. Sooner or later they will have to do something. They will have to do something. So can we make another one? I don't think so. I don't think we can. So, brutal game, brutal game. So that will sadly be the last game. They have an answer. They have a freaking answer. Can't believe it. Honestly can't believe it. Draconic intervention is in sorcery, so maybe a dragon fire? Scorching dragon fire? So they're on 30, we're on 38. This could be a very, very long game. Mm, yes, it will. Oh, yes, it will. Was that an instant? No, it's a sorcery as well. All right, what you doing, Azocene? What are you doing? The magma freaking opus. The magma freaking opus. All right. All freaking right. We're declining here. And we are uh, paying for mastering that sucker as well. Just out of spite. That, that on this point is just pure spite. Just pure freaking spite. If they have a counter spell here, that is fine with me. But sooner or later they will have to put something on the board. 
And we're still on 17 life, so hey. Two magma opuses are gone, though. Another gold span dragon. That is bad. That is actually very bad. So if they have a counter spell here, we are pretty screwed. We are pretty screwed. And I'm afraid that we will draw a lot of lands very soon. I am very afraid of that. Very much afraid of that. The Shadow's freaking Verdict. But we can uh, use the Crawling Barons here. Get in for a lot of damage, which I like, which I like a lot. Don't you tell me. They have yet another answer. All right. They don't. But if they have a counter spell here, we just lost the game. If they do, we just lost uh, the game. Oh, we will also lose our Crawling Barons here, so maybe I should have done it before. Maybe that wasn't too smart, but hey, who am I? Not Mr. Dr. Smarty Pants. Okay, so they would put down the Brazen Borrower here, yes, just as I thought. And I'm very afraid they have a counter spell for our uh, Ugin. So I am not too inclined to use it here. Not too inclined to freaking use it. But these Cosmos Elixirs are putting in some hard work. Some really hard work. So, this is a 17 minutes game. Crazy. Crazy. I mean, it kind of is. Oh boy. Okay, another Brazen Borrower in hand. So this is 10 damage to the face if they have another Bone Crusher Giant, which the chances are pretty high because the way the game has been going now, everything went into their favor. They will have it now. They will 1 million percent have it now. Good game, my friend. We fought as hard as we could. We fought as hard as we could, but there wasn't too much we could have done here. Not like this. They found the four offs of everything in half of their deck. Not bad. Not bad. It's Patreon time. Oh, what a time. It's a Patreon time. So here we are. It's time for the Patreon shoutout. Thank you guys so very freaking much. I really appreciate it that you're supporting the channel with your hard-earned cash. You go in the extra mile to make sure that uh, we will be even more successful than we already are. So, special thanks to everyone on this list. Let's start with the gold span dragons. We have Nicholas Smith. We have Randy, aka Donald T. We have Floriano Scott. We have Jan Human, Simster625, and Robinson vs. Parkinson. Thank you for being gold span dragons. And the crazy part is we already have a big one. The Nico Bolas got Pharaoh. Right now there is only one. Will there ever be a second one? We don't know. But until then, there's only one. Nico Bolas got Pharaoh. And that is Katusa County Film Festival. Thank you so much for supporting the channel with the highest tier. And yeah, if you guys want to check out the Patreon, a link will be down in the description. Easy as pie. And if you don't, don't you worry about it. You can do so much for the channel without spending a single cent. For example, just subscribe. It's free. And if you subscribe, it will help people find the channel. If you like the video, if you share it with your friend, it will help people find the channel. And that way we can grow stronger and better every single day. But still, I appreciate every single one of you. No matter if you spend one single cent or not, if you're here, you support the channel. So thank you very freaking much. All right, let's get into the deck. I wish I could have done a fifth game because going 50-50 always feels bad. But uh, yeah, the last game was just too long. They were just a little bit too lucky. They kept us very, very well under the 20. If we would have gotten another Cosmos Alex here, would have been very, very tasty, but we did. So yeah, we didn't even find our Forsaken Monument. And uh, I was very, very sure that they had another counter spell. So running the Ugin into that counter spell would have not been that nice. But they found three Gold Span Dragons, three uh, Auron's Epiphany, three uh, Brazen Borrowers, three... Uh, did they find a third uh, Bone Crusher Giant? I think they did. They even found two Wish of the Baboon of the Wish Giver. So everything was in their favor. But that is just magic sometimes. 
we couldn't find our good stuff. It was pretty well played from them, keeping us as low as they did all the time, just not to give us the card advantage. Got to give it to them. Very freaking good. Would I change anything here? I don't think so. I think this deck gets even a little bit better in best of three because you can put in a tasty sideboard that isn't a learn board. So I would cut the grab session in the best of three. Maybe put in, uh, I don't know, some more spot removal. And then later on just put a lot of hand hate into the counter, uh, into the sideboard. Just in case you're going up against a super controlly deck. And that way you can do it. Best of one, best of three, no matter what you like, you can do it. Alright, so this was the Agonizing Ugin, one of my favorite decks of all freaking time. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Check out the Patreon, check out the Discord, check out the everything. As my master once said, I'm Matches Malone and I will see you all tomorrow.